Addison is on the air. Do you love old time radio? Yeah! You know absolutely nothing about old-time radio. Also, yes. Then Madison on the Air is for you. Follow Madison, a modern-day makeup influencer, as she zapped back into the golden age of radio. Every episode is standalone with a wide variety of genres to choose from, like detective noir. You put the dick in private dick. Superheroes. So I am in the body of the Green Hornet. Westerns. Saloon fight. Now this is a Western. Sci-fi. Dude, the Martian's got a freaking heat ray. Plus classic characters. Toto. Oh, I gotta get that dog into an obedience class. Really digging Dracula's OG goth style. <gasps> what if I killed freaking Sherlock Holmes? And many more. Actual old-time radio scripts adapted. It's like if the MST3K riff tracks guys were in the movies they riff. Start at the beginning or jump around to any title that grabs you. New episodes premiere the first of every month. Find us wherever you get your podcasts. And now, a feature presentation. Presenting Canary P.I.N. The Curse of the Cadavers. Remastered. A J. Henry production. He's lean. He's keen. And most importantly, he's clean. Don't let your suds be duds and reach for Duke's detergent. Now with triple the amount of filtered bovine tallow. Plumes of smoke erupt over my wool brimmed silhouette. I like to sit in the dark, where the dangerous and grotesque reside. I feel at home this way. There's so much work to do. The cough is lean. One day I'll be able to settle down in that remote beachfront cottage. I'll put my feet up and, well, I'll watch those salty tomatoes grow. That day isn't today, or tomorrow for that matter. You just gotta hold on, or one day, you might not come out of the dark. Yeah, what do you got for me? I'm Mr. Mori, and Mori's Mortuary is here to see ya. Send him in. As I'm tamping out my cigarette in my crowded ashtray, the knob turns and in comes a short, stocky, nebbish looking fellow. He had a pencil thin mustache that looks drawn on, and a sharp come over of futility. Hello. My name is Mick Mori. Won't you take a seat and tell me what vexes you? Oh, yes. Th thank you, sir. Mr. Canary, do you listen to the news? Sure, I like to pollute my brain. <laughs> Have you heard of the unprecedented rash of robberies? It's a real burgle fest out there. Crime is worse than ever. What are they calling that guy? Here it is, front page. The bobbled bandit strikes again. Where do they come up with this stuff? Well, I... Mr. Canary, I... I think I... I have a very particular problem. You have a certain reputation, and I don't know where else to go. If this guy claims to be the leader of a crime syndicate, I'm buying him a bus ticket. Destination? Funny farm. Tell me what you know, Mr. Mori. I am a mortician. A good one at that. I do everything. Embalming to handmade casket doilies. Peculiar things have been happening to my... clients, as I prefer to call them. I lit a lucky and held out the pack. Now he shook his head. I am good at my job. I'd go so far as to say, great. After preparing the deceased for their final rest, I'd notice strange anomalies the following mornings. Dirt under the fingernails, grass stains on the cuff of the pants, old motor oil on soles. A good mortician would never overlook such things. I'm just a private eye. What do I know about the funeral business? Mr. Canary, I... I've come to the conclusion that... Take a deep breath, Mr. Mori. <sighs> the dead are rising up in the night to commit these crimes. I'm sorry, we can't work together. There's the door, I suggest you use it. 
Mr. Mori held out his clenched fist and released a handful of diamonds and gold doubloons, landing in a dramatic clatter. Do I look like Scrooge McDuck? Undertaking doesn't pay this well. I will not have anything to do with ill-gotten fortunes. If I went to the cops, they'd lock me up faster than you can say 23 skidoo. I don't believe in undead ghouls traipsing around at night to pull off jewel heist. Neither do I. At least I didn't before. Against my better judgment, I'm going to take this case. If I can't solve this within 48 hours, you turn yourself in and let the copper sort it out. Otherwise, you walk out that door and you'll have a head start before I call this in. I accept your help. Get this off my desk. Do not walk around with it. You got a safe? Lock it away. At once. Pay the secretary on the way out. Now put an egg in your shoe and scramble. I flick my desktop lamp off and sink back into my chair. Only the soft cherry glow of my cigarette faintly illuminating my face. Taking down the bobble bandit. Those are the kind of scores that make careers. Those are the kind of scores that make sandy feet and octagonal shade. Let's knock on some doors. Nick Maury? Yeah, sure I know him. Say, you a cop? Let me see your badge. Private investigator? I don't know nothing about that. Good day, sir. Yeah, I've seen him make around. Mostly keeps to himself. Seems nice enough, that's all I know. You here to deliver the ice? Where's the ice? Oh. Hmm. You better come in and sit down. Do you like tea? Just the elixir I need to warm my bones. Would love some, dear. My name is Linda Valentine. I've lived on this street for many years. What's your business with Mick, Mr. Canary? Is he okay? I've been hired by an anonymous party. I assure you he's not in any trouble. Mick is a very special person to me. When my dear husband Rupert departed three years ago, we worked so hard all our lives just to get by. I couldn't afford funeral services. We have no kids, not much family. The bank wants nothing to do with me with little security. Lovely tea. Ooh. Bergamot. Delightful. I was ready to bury Rupert in a plain pine box up on Potter's Field, but Mick stepped right in. He said, hard-working people deserved a dignified end, a dignity that wasn't awarded in life. A king's funeral for a pauper's price. For that, I will always be grateful to that man. I'm sure you'll find similar stories if you dig deep enough. I don't think anyone will give you the time of day if they think it'll incriminate him. He's a treasure to this town. He even makes sure my walkway is shoveled in the winter and I bring him mama's meatballs every Sunday. It's the least I can do. Thank you very much, Miss Valentine. One thing you'll learn in this line of business is how to read people. Some residents were on the level. And some were feeding me lines so fat you could hang your laundry on them. Maury's Mortuary. A ground floor business with an apartment on top. A modest property with neatly kept shrubbery. I've been expecting you. I've been getting many calls that you've been asking around town about me. Show me the scene of the quote-unquote crime. Right this way, sir. You are standing in the parlor where we greet guests and they can talk. This is the powder room and this is the utility closet. The commode. Mop and buckets. Story checks out. And this is the viewing room. It was nicer than I expected. Persian rugged floors. Chairs neatly lined up. We serve all denominations here, and dress the room to their needs. Behind this curtain is a door downstairs to the embalming area, and a lift for bringing the deceased up and down. I jot a few things down on my notepad. Half the time I'm writing nonsense, but it keeps people on their toes. Okay, let's go downstairs. And this, Mr. Canary, is where the magic happens where I prepare the cadavers as they come in. This is where those phantom jewels appear? Precisely. On a counter there. On the draining table here. It's never in the same spot. 
quantime jewels were in the light fixture. Looked like Barnum and Bailey in here. Kinda nice. What's this room? That's where we keep our clients on ice. Nah, I'm afraid you'll have to open it. Pretty full right now, as you can see. Kind of a double-edged sword in my business. When crime and sorrow is booming, so am I. Each body laid on a stretcher with a thin white sheet draped over. Their grayish feet stick out like macabre mannequins in a line, each tagged. Why do these ones have black tags while the rest are white? Those are for the indigent and unclaimed. They are stored here until the state tells me to prepare them for the potter's field. Usually buried with a blank grave marker. Even if they're going in a box of raw pine, I give them every care I can give them. Maybe give them the respect they didn't get in life. Coming in, I saw an apartment on the second story. It's not much, but it saves time on the commute. There is a separate entrance on the side of the building. We do a quick walk around of his apartment. A quaint bachelor pad complete with soup cans on the kitchen counter. And an overflowing hamper. A far cry from the neatness of his business. We're gonna stake out this building day and night. I can't have you anywhere near this place. Take this card and go to this address listed. You'll be staying under the name Tammy Tamerson. Tammy? Who's she? Once you're in the room, you stay in. You need a couple salami sandwiches, then you better plan accordingly. I'll have eyes on you too, so no funny business. Now get a move on, Tam Tams. I stopped by my office to grab my thermos. I turn on the radio to catch the end of the 9 o'clock news. Clouds coming in from the west with mild temperatures going into the morning. Chance of intermittent showers. And now, we go to the Chief of Police for the ever-developing Bubble Bandit Saga. It's been four days since there's been a robbery. We don't have any reason to believe he will even strike again. Museums, banks, and other places of interest are now at heightened levels of security. He doesn't seem to hit residential areas, but all the same. Lock your doors, windows, and take proper precautions. We assume he is armed and dangerous. We are very busy. That will be all. I pulled the Maury's and Parker across the street. Kyla pulled up, hat pulled down. Fresh pack of Luckies on the dash, newspaper unfurled as cover. A hazed hobo in his bindle making his way towards the train tracks. Meow. A stray cat pawing at the garbage cans cranes his head towards me and darts off into the shadows. Nothing. Not a damn thing all night. I collected Mick and once again we did a walk through the mortuary. Through the parlor, down the hall, and into the viewing room. Nothing out of place. Then down the stairs into Mick's laboratory. In the corner was a cold metal chair where laid a single gold coin. Now this definitely wasn't here yesterday. Mr. Canary, for the life of me, I... Don't. No. Open the human ice box. Mud prints stretched over the floor tiles, as if the perpetrator was dragging his leg. I put on a pair of rubber gloves and I went up and down the line. Three of them showed debris from the outside world. I grabbed Mr. Mori by the collar. What's this? You trying to make a fool of me? The dead stay dead. They don't steal priceless artifacts. I had my eyes on this place all night. No one came in or out. Mr. Canary. I am just as confused as you are. I'm the one who's innocent and has everything to lose. I don't know what is happening. We're gonna meet back here at 5 p.m. I'll get some chain and a padlock and lock myself in here. I'll slide the key under the door to my partner who'll be on the outside. If I don't see any voodoo, you explain it to the judge. I reach into my inner pocket of my trench and pull out a thin case containing some tricks of the trade. I do a quick dusting of the gold coin, doorknobs, and any points of interest. All clean as a hound's tooth. And I'm out of here. I keep a cot in my office for when I'm working late nights. And I don't want to get too comfortable. And I was asleep before my head hit the pillar. Maybe I'm getting too old for the grindstone. In my salad days, I could do 48 hours standing on my head. I was up on my own and cleaned myself up in the office sink. Yeah, the bachelor life, eh? Slapping my bristly cheek.
Better get a move on. Now listen, there's a window in here that you can see from the street. If I need up before morning, I'll flick the light three times. Come in lock and loaded just in case. You got it, Canary. I close the door to the bombing room behind me with a thud. I sealed the door with a greasy cold chain and a stout padlock. I slid the key under the door to my associate. I settle in for the night. I lay a packet of saltines and a small log of summer sausage on the draining table. I take my trench off and the buzzing fluorescence glints off my polished six-shooter hanging off my shoulder. I open today's newspaper. The bauble bandit is back, read in bold letters. Read the whole damn paper. Some articles twice. Need to stretch. I open a cabinet containing various beakers and liquids. What'll it be, RP? Saline off formaldehyde. Just coffee for me, beer tender. I'm on the clock. Yeah, you're losing it, canary. Yeah, it's really coming down out there now. With a crack of thunder, the lights go out. I get to my feet, but I trip forward, tethered by some unseen means. I get to my feet, wobbled and pawed at my ankles. It was a greasy chain. Like it was a cue, the lights flick back on. A ghoul-like woman stood at the door, wrapped in one of the modesty sheets like a toga, pale and not a scratch of hair on any of her exposed skin. She stared at me blankly. You better stop talking fast, cue ball. With an explosion of flamboyancy, she started a rant. Mr. Canary, you are in the presence of the great Panini. Does that come with a dill pickle, toots? The chains were only loosely wrapped around my ankles and I stepped out of them. I'm the greatest showman or showwoman you've never heard of. I've learned from the best gurus, swamis and yogis, the best mentalists, magicians and wizards. Did I mention escapologists? She threw the padlock at my feet. I could have easily snuck by you. But to be frank, I'm bored. I'm not a cat burglar by trade. I just kind of fell into it. It's just too easy for me to steal from people because of my vocation. I can never take any credit for my work. I travel all over the world looking for hard luck cases. I redistribute the wealth to those that need it in the most. Oh, Mick Morris always one paycheck away from disaster. He does so much for his community. There's hard luck cases all over the city, all over the world. And I just share a little magic with them. One less Duesenberg for a big man in a big suit. And life-changing fortunes for the deserving. No one gets hurt. The first handful of jewels would have set McMory up for life. Why'd you keep coming back here? Uh, I needed a home base. Stayed longer than I expected, huh? Much suffering and injustice in the city. <laughs> terrible, terrible place. Through meditation and breathing exercises, I am able to stop my heart to a nominal amount. All outward appearances show I am dead to the world. In reality, though, I'm just taking a nap. I get it now. You were hiding as a black tag. That's right! Why the goofy zombie subterfuge? It was... amusing me. I reached for my belly gun and retracted the hammer. Stick him up or I'll put daylight through you. Canary, you're ruining the fan. She outreaches her hand over a wastebasket and drops six bullets. Uh, uh, what in blue blazes? What, what? I've dealt with all caliber of pickpockets. Impossible. Panini outreaches her other hand and makes Ace of Diamonds appear out of thin air. She flicks it in my general direction. It's time for me to move on from this city. Ah, it felt good to go out. Thank you, Birdman. She waved her hand in front of her face, each time revealing a different hairstyle. Pompadour, victory rolls, page boy, bushy great beard. That's the hobo from last night. She landed on tight pulled back hair. And now. I make my groan exit. She raises both hands and gyrates her fingers towards the doorknob. Oh, 
Alakazam! She anticlimactically reaches over and turns the knob and walks up the stairs. I race after to find her, standing in the viewing room, now in a gray suit, shaking her finger at me. Oh, meow. Meow. In a puff of smoke, she was gone. I quickly ran outside. The sun was starting to peek over the hazy horizon. Did anyone come out of the building? No one. Give me a gun. Go to the hotel and get Mick. I ran around the property and back into the building, where Panini disappeared, a crunched up ping pong ball dripping with a mysterious liquid laid. I jogged down to the bombing room. A drab painting on the wall hangs askew, revealing a safe with the door ajar. Mixed jewels, long gone. The playing card Panini flicked at me laid face down on the floor. With the tip of a pencil, I turned it over to reveal a joker. She was still in the building, and she's taunting me as she's running out. No eyes on the outside. She's good. Mick stumbles in with worry painted all over his face. Mr. Canary, are you alright? Look at this mess. Why are there bullets in my trash? Mr. Mori, I cannot begin to explain what happened tonight, but I will try. The look of bafflement appeared on his face. The jewels are gone. There's nothing to report because there's no evidence. Except some crap on the carpet and this pristine poker card. You're free to go. I don't want to see you or a place like this for another 50 years. I saw all the worry wash from his face. Oh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Canary. Thank you. Thank you. Please, excuse me. I must retire now. I haven't gotten any rest for three days. Mick went upstairs to his apartment. As he pulls the cover off his bed, he finds a sack with a comically large dollar sign on it. Scribbled on a ace of diamonds read, Do some more good with this. Your pal, Panini. Voice acted by, in order of appearance, J. Henry as Canary P.I. Stephen Lynx as Mick Mori. Jenny Dyer as Linda Valentine. Ren Noir as Panini. Written, directed, and edited by J. Henry. Music by Pedro Esparza. Kevin McLeod. Follow us at twitter.com forward slash rpcanarypi. This concludes the broadcast.